if you're having issues with your pump not turning on when it's first switched on, the one of the reasons could be your Hall Effect switch not working. It looks like this and is in this part of the pump. Um, to get at it, the first thing you're going to need to do is release the four screws. One, two, three, and four. I've already done uh, three of them. You'll use a Torx screwdriver uh, to do all four. Next, you will need to undo the stress release uh, nut so here. Which should be. Should just come off and loosen, it doesn't need to come all the way off. After that, this front panel should come off and show the non return valve. Sorry, the Hall Effect switch. Well, the non return valve and the Hall Effect switch. First thing you need to do is to uh, cut the wire, um, leave around about um, five to ten centimeters left on there, so somewhere around. Uh, then, using a uh, foot side screw, screwdriver, undo the two uh, screws that hold it on. Uh, without any effort, the old Hall effect should just come out. Uh, your new Hall effect switch uh, will come with a connector the end. Uh, you will need to remove the connector. So cut that off. It's not needed anymore. And then you'll need to strip the wires back slightly so you can uh, the solder can get onto them. So uh, possibly a bit more. The old wire uh, will need to be stripped back. And once again, the individual wires will need to be stripped. Now, as you can see, they are color coded. We have brown, green, and white that need to go together. What you'll need to do is take your length of shrink wrap and put it down all the way to the end of your new hall effect and out of the way and then take oh, I'm just gonna strip it back a little bit more then you need to take each of your solder sleeves and place it on one of the wires. Copper, copper in the wire. That's for the brown. And that's for the white. Then what you'll need to do is uh, take your other end. I'm just going to strip it back off a little bit more. I was giving myself some more room. And feed it in to these with the correct colour. So once again, green goes in there, for example. I'll then use my, I've got a heat gunner here, which I'm going to heat each one up individually. Now you don't want to be too quick with this. What you're looking to do is get the ends to shrink on to make a waterproof seal. And then when that's done that, the center will start to melt and we'll solder them together. And 
And while a heat gun is best, uh, any heat source will do. Just be careful with it to make sure that it uh, doesn't burn the plastic. I'll just check that has fully soldered. I don't know if you see, but it's got a, a solder that has run all the way through. And that is now a watertight seal because the red parts have ripped on. And I'll do that with the brown. with the white. Can be a slightly fiddly job. I'm just going to move the camera to show this properly. All three have soldered and sealed, which is what we're looking for. As you see the solder has run um, up, up and down the wires. Now what we're going to do... is move your heat shrink to completely cover where we were before. So we are hiding underneath here. Make sure you give uh, generous room to try and get them as close to being in the center as possible. Sorry, it's quite difficult to one-hand it. Then once again with your heat gun, Heat up both ends. Which will give a secondary seal. Now this is a um, resin filled, so you might get a little bit of plastic come out the end. Which is good, because that means that it's heated up and has sealed properly. Then what we do, we do in we, what we did in reverse. So we take our um, uh, Hall Effect switch, push it back in, make sure it is all the way in. And take our screws. Now they are self tapping, but you have already got a thread in there, so they should be quite easy to get. Two. Uh, make sure the wiring uh, goes somewhere so it doesn't get trapped anywhere. And place the front cover, and then just tighten all four up. And 
hand and just tighten up the stress release.